Welcome to the Bodaciously Awesome Family Show. Bodaciously Awesome Family Show. The only show dedicated to helping parents maximize their kids' experiences and for kids to reap the fun. Here are your hosts, the Bodacious Family, Adam, Anthony, yeah! and Jeffrey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome, welcome. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Welcome back to Bodaciously Awesome Family Show. A little bit, I want, I'll get more energy. Shout! That's better. See, you got to engage the people. The people out there in podcast land need to know that you are here, that you are alive. I promise I'm here. I'm not dead. Okay, good point. Good point. Good point. Well, welcome back to the Awesome Family Show. I am Adam. I am Wacko. And everybody else is the night off today. So it's just me and you here, me, Z, Z Man. Yeah. Okay. Now, Zach, when we talked about our relaunch, actually, before we get to the relaunch, do you remember where people can find us in podcast land? When they want to look out on the World Wide Web, where do they where do they find BAFS? iTunes. That's correct. <laughs> <coughs> and Stitcher, Google Play Music, and the other big one is Spotify. So those are Wait, two. we're on Spotify? We certainly are. Did, did you just po- po- can you post it on Spotify? I certainly can. I think we may even be on, on Amazon Music. You may be able to say um, something like, uh, you know, uh, Alexa, play Buddy Scouts and Family Show, and it will. Yeah, which I is did that cool. with Echo. Okay. Right. Um, and we were supposed to be on, like, Pandora. I don't know if it ever happened. We'll have to look. So, anywho, we were all over the place. When we were talking about our relaunch, one of the things we talked about was we were talking about cinematic education and movies. Harry Potter. Watch. Harry and, Potter. And we one, love Harry Potter. And one of the things we discussed it's was Harry doing an Potter. episode on each of the Harry Potter movies and subsequent books. And to kind of meld those together between the book and the movie. So Anthony and I did a couple book first movie episodes earlier and some of the things he was reading. And we never did them on Harry Potter. And you really wanted to do that. Yes, I love Harry Potter. You, you, you seem to be a big I do, fan. I do, I do. Okay. Period. So we want to do this first one on... Sorcerer's Stone, first book. And the, we're also going to base it on the movie and the book. That is all correct. That is all correct. So Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. First, I have a trivia question for you. Okay. I can answer any trivia question about Harry Potter. The first book, Harry Potter's mm-hmm. and the Sorcerer's Stone. Yep. However, if you were to go in other countries, it is not called Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. It is called Harry Potter and the something else stone. It's a different word. It's not sorcerer. Do you know what that word is? No. It's Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Oh, yeah, the Philosopher's Stone. Don't know why. I'm sure there's a reason. I'm sure I've read it, but yeah, that's besides the point. So, we start with book one, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and first question is for you. What did you do first? Did you read the book first or see the movie first? Movie. You did. That is correct. Um, Good answer. Now, what I when they first came out, obviously they, I read the books before they came out as movies, and what I saw in my head did not match the movie. You had the opportunity though to see the movies. So you already had a good blueprint, and you've been to Universal, so you've been able to walk around like Hogwarts proper. Yep. So what did you think when you then read it? Did you see that imagery and those characters in your mind while you were reading it? Yes, I did. I saw, but I saw the ones that are in the movie. So you saw the people from the movies and what they were. Were there any differences in that? Like when, when you read it, that you read it differently? No. There was nothing. There was... Are you saying uh, there's a difference between the book and the movie? No, not yet. Not yet. But like, let's say, whatever, Harry's talking in the movie or Hermione. Did, did you see those actors from the movie? Did oh, you yeah. see Hogwarts yes. described, not necessarily how it's described exactly. in the book, but described as you saw it in the movie? Yes. Yeah, and did you, so other books you read, though, you have to think of what those things look like, right? Which is too hard. So you like this, that's what I was going to go next. Do you like this better, knowing the the relationship already, like knowing the, um, not only just the plot, but what the descriptions and how those all come to play? Because obviously the magical, the magical world is a pretty weird world to be put into. Yes, definitely. And did you often think, like, like you were hairy in that, like, you know, from a perspective of 10-year-old being transported into this world you knew nothing about? No, I didn't. And why not? Because I'm not Harry. Well, not necessarily like Harry, but you know what I mean, like from a perspective of this world that you didn't know um, what not, it would be like. Not really. Okay. So what what do you think about this magical world here? Give me some give me some flavor. Like, what's your favorite part of the first book slash movie? Like, what did you really latch onto? Why did it really draw your attention? My fr- I I love how um 
in the first book, spoiler alert. Yeah, oh yeah, good yeah. good call. Spoilers. If you haven't read or seen like this fifteen year old movie, we're gonna spoil it. Yeah. <laughs> Just to make sure. So and I love how you always think Snape is the bad guy. You always think he's trying to break into the chamber every time. Especially when Harry sees the bite on his leg. But then once you get into the chamber, once you try to find the stone, there's Quirrell with Voldemort on the back of his head. Yeah, that, that was freaky. Like, the dude with the, the, the back of his head, that was kind of freaky. Yeah, that was, it was a little. It was a little freaky. Yeah. So what did you think? So Snape is, like, one of my favorite characters. He's um, so unpredictable. Yeah, well, You never just, know if he's good or bad. No, I mean, eventually you do, but yeah, it's, it's, I think it's written very well in that regard, and then, and the actor, um, when he plays it, it plays it so, just that dry voice and monotone, Mr. Potter, and then you just never, yeah, you never, he just glares all the time, so you never really know where he stands. Yeah. I really like that. Mm-hmm. So, who in this book just, just concentrate on this one, not the entire series, but in this book, who's your favorite character? Snape. Okay, really? Yeah. Okay. He, he, he just played it so well, like pretending everyone thinks he's the bad guy, and then it's Quirrell. And did you find that in the book and the movie the same, that that was your favorite character in both? Yes. Okay. And what's your favorite part? So is there a part of the movie, is there a part, whether it's the movie or book, that's different from your favorite? So, like, is there a part of the book you're like, man, I love this part of the book, but I really didn't like it in the movie, or I love this part of the movie, but in the book I kind of gloss over it? Nope. I read everything, and it was all interesting, and it was all interesting in the movie, so. Okay. Yeah. So what's your favorite, um, your favorite part of the, of, of, of the Sorcerer's Stone? Um, the part where you found, find out that, like, when you get into the chamber and you see Professor Quirrell, that's my favorite part. Do you want to know my favorite part? What? I mean, I told you when we watched the movie, but do you remember? No. You don't remember? Okay, well, when we watch subsequent movies, I always made a comment. Who is, like, my Neville, favorite character? Neville, Neville. Neville is my favorite character all because of book one. And why? Because he stands up to his friends. He stands up... And Voldemort, or not Voldemort, hey, Voldemort, and, uh, and Dumbledore even makes it a point to say that. I think it's the absolute greatest lesson in any of the movies and books. Um, and at the, so at the end, if you remember at the end of Harry Potter and Sorcerer's Stone, and they think the house is all tied, or, you know, Dumbledore, or the Gryffindor ties, and Dumbledore then gives extra points to Gryffindor because Neville, it's that, you know, what Dumbledore says is something along the lines of, it takes a lot of courage to stand up for yourself or to stand up to your enemies, but it takes even more courage to stand up to your friends, which Neville has to do at one point. And I think it's it's a profoundly good point, especially for kids of your age who are growing up. And you might find you have some friends who just don't do some good things sometimes, and you have to stand up to them. And I thought that was, it's an amazing lesson. Yeah. And then I often come back to it throughout all the books. Every, every time Neville comes up, I'm like, there's the true hero. Yeah. And then it all ties back in the last, at the end of the last book, where again Neville's the hero. Yeah. The really. Well, not well, not really, because Harry kind of, you know. I mean, I know that all these books are called Harry Potter and the, and thus it's called like the Harry Potter books or whatever. I think this entire series should be how Neville Longbottom saves the Wizarding World. No, because did he kill Voldemort? Did he kill Voldemort? Yes he or does, no? He does yes not. He does not. He, exactly. No, he does not. Exactly. But could Harry have killed him without Neville? Um, yes, because Hermione and Ron were about to kill him. No. Yeah. The answer's no. Yeah. No. Yes. No. Yeah. I think you just missed the answer. It's no. Yes. <laughs> all right. Don't so, lie. I'm not lying. Neville's yeah. that awesome. Mm. It's all about Neville. No. Um, hashtag all about Neville. No. Um, yeah, pound sign. No. All about Neville. Um, all right. So, is there any part... So and when you get long, and I know you're still reading a lot of the books, and when the books start getting longer, you'll notice that there's chunks of the books that aren't in the movies. It's because the books get so long, and the movies can't be too terribly long. Early on, though, it's not as much, but is there a part in the movie or in the book that's not in the movie? Is there some changes that uh, yes. are reflective? Yes. And what are those? Um. So in the chamber, there's a potions riddle in the book, but not in the movie. Do you remember the riddle? There's seven bottles. I don't know. Hermione's just 
That was it. There's yeah. seven bottles. Yes, seven. Bottles. <laughs> it's like seven. It's like heads up, seven up. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, but that's all really because that book is really kind of you know thin, right? In it's terms of like three hundred thirty three pages. Yeah, but then the, you have, you get to like uh, eight hundred. Yeah, I mean you get to like order the Phoenix or yeah, then then you also you're like they're so long, um, and they're but they're all great. I mean they they you know well I have problems with the last book. You'll get there, but. Um, for the most part, I mean, these books are all fantastic. So as you keep reading them, I love the fact there are more pages because you should be really engaged with them throughout. Yeah. Okay, so let's get back to some movie here. So um, this movie, directed by Chris Columbus, has this score by John Williams, who's like the yeah you know, the greatest uh, you know music writer of movie history. Um, what what in the movie cap? It captures your imagination the most. Is it the visuals? Is it the acting? Like, what really drew you into the movie? Because you are you're bought in, and it's actually the first movie might be my least favorite of the movies. Yeah, definitely. But what grabbed you? Like, what 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 enraptured you? What what really draw? You, what drew you into those movies um, or that movie? Definitely, like the visuals that really helped, and like the mystery. There's always mystery in Harry Potter, which I love. That is true, there is. And this one, and what, but the, here's the thing that I love most about it in the first book, right? Is that the wizarding world is so different and unique, right? That it's unlike anything that I've ever experienced, right? Or anything you would know in your day to day life. And using then Harry as basically you, right? Like, as, you know, this person from the muggle world, getting to experience all that magic for the first time really opens it up. And it's just so well done that it, I think that every little thing, like even like, yeah, whether it's the chocolate frog, right, or any, just the, the floating candles, right, the, the sorting hat, I think they all just kind of get really brought together really well. And all of those little things, to me, captured my imagination even more than the bigger things, like magic in general or Hogwarts, right? It was those little tiny pieces. But since it's the first series, which means we have to ask, what is your favorite movie? In this, in the Harry Potter series. Yes. What is your favorite movie? My favorite movie. So we just all, we just re- recently watched them all. Um, had you asked me this before that, I would have said uh, four. Uh, the Goblet of Fire. I really like that movie. It's still high on the list, although um, I may have to supplement it with honestly, Deathly Hallows one or even or two or even one. I really this this rewatch. One was the best. Yeah, this rewatch. I gotta tell you, I really like Deathly one, Hallows part one more. One, one was the best. Yeah, that was my biggest surprise how much I liked that movie. It was really good. Okay. So, what else do you want to say about Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, the book or the movies? Are there any other pieces of nuggets you want to give these people or anything you want to say, hey, make sure you reread that scene or rewatch that part of the movie? Um, no. Okay. So, here's the question I'm going to ask you after all of these. And it's very important because every time we ever do a movie podcast, I'm going to ask you this question. Are you ready? Are you ready for the question? Yes. All right. Zachary, on a scale of zero to five, zero being an absolute waste of two hours and 20 minutes of your life, five being metaphysical perfection, using only whole and half numbers, how would you rate Harry the movie Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone? 3.5. A 3.5 out of five. I think there's a little high. I would say a three because I think it's again, it's my least favorite of them, but they all get better and better every time. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Fantastic. That is our podcast, then, on, our first podcast on Harry Potter series, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, book and movie. We'll see you all next week or something else. Until then, I am Adam. I am the wacko. And we will just say, do not just be awesome. Be good, awesome. And we'll talk to you all next week. Bye. Bye. See you. Go Neville.